Mr. Mort Anvari is the Director of Programs and Strategy, Assistant Secretary of the Army Financial Management and Comptroller at the Pentagon. He was selected to the Army Senior Service in February 2014. As the Assistant Secretary of the Army Financial Management and Comptroller, Mr. Anvari is responsible for providing policy direction and guidance to the Army on the conduct of mission, force, installation, and personnel costs in support of the Army cost management and end-to-end -end process implementation. So what he has to say here probably will be very valuable as you approach your individual requ collective requirements for HTAR next week. He has a PhD in industrial systems engineering, a master's in mechanical engineering, and a bachelor's in mechanical engineering, all from the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, Michigan. He is well credentialed in the acquisition field to include a level three certification in DOD financial management, a level three certification in acquisition business financial management, and a level three certification in acquisition business cost estimating. Recent awards include leading his organization to earn Lean Six Sigma Excellent Award Program Organization Awards in 2016 and 2017. CS Advanced Course students, please help me in welcoming today's guest speaker, Mr. Morton Anvari. Undersecretary of Army from, uh, uh, that supports SES's engagement in this course. Initially, they asked uh, to volunteer. Not too many people volunteered. He ordered us to be here. So on <laughs> order of Mr. Kelly, I'm here. First, I want to thank, sincerely thank leadership and uh, faculty and the staff of Army Management Staff College for such a wonderful job they do. This transformation of our civilian is not an easy job. It takes a lot of effort. Uh, I thank them for the great job. And in fact, I had my presentation ready. As I start talking to faculty, I kind of feel like, wow, they, can, they, they know much better than the, uh, uh, what I want to present. So bear with me. Particularly, some of you have seen some of the discussion that I'm going to present here. So uh, if it's redundant, uh, take it as a a reinforcement rather than uh, repeating myself. I also want to thank um, Civilian Leadership Management Organization, CLISMO, that uh, facilitate a lot of our work, a lot of administration from outside is done to uh, this happening. Now, the discussion today is what? Enterprise-wide or enterprise-wide. So everybody write enterprise-wide as a one word. Since I didn't know what it had, the domain of enterprise, I separate wide and enterprise and made it two words that they are like a synonymous, enterprise and wide. How wide? Depends, we talk about it. Uh, so I'm not gonna cover all the, uh, it's supposed to go forward, right? That's what they told me. Oh, okay. Uh, First of all, I did ask one of the seminar, what is a foundation? What is a, um, uh, um, please don't answer. They are videoing you, you don't want to be video. Okay. So I'm gonna answer all my questions. Uh, in, in fact, I answer them first, then I ask questions. See if, if the question fits. Uh, um, the question is, uh, what is a scientific foundation for enterprise? Why we insist on something that we don't know the scientific foundation of it? Scientific foundation has been present for a long time. In a field of optimization, when I say optimization, I mean more <coughs> kind of mathematical term that you have objective function, and then your objective function, either you maximize it or minimize it, you might have several uh, objective function, and series of constraints. Those constraints should be related to the variable that you're uh, affecting or influencing directly or indirectly the optimized case. So we say, op in optimization, say global optimization and local optimization. And there is a theory that says, and I'm not, I'm actually it's proven, if you have a set, definition of set, 
replace it with in, uh, enterprise. Subset component of that enterprise. So it's, it says if you optimize all subset of a set, you are not necessarily optimizing a set. <coughs> wow, contradiction. What does that mean? It means we, if we all are perfect, our organization not necessarily is perfect. Isn't it contrary? So we all of a sudden we find that there is a contradiction or uh, as view changes from subset to set, things does not have the same rule and same meaning. In one of your seminars, I use one example, and that example is my daughter comes to me and says, Daddy, I say, what? I just graduated from college and I want to buy a $50,000 car. And I tell him, are you stupid? You just graduated from college, you just want to buy a $50,000 car? You are not going to make it. This is really bad. Uh, she says, I did ask economic advi advisor to president, same question. He said, go ahead and do it. This is great. Actually, he gave me a coin. <laughs> I said, what? Because he's looking at the US economy. I'm looking at Mort and Boris economy. <laughs> it, is, it is our universe is the one that defines our optimization. So what that says, says even if I optimize myself, effect of my optimization might not help the country. Let's look at it differently. If we all be stingy, if we don't spend money, if the consumer don't spend money, what happened to our economy? It's going to affect it. And that effect is going to affect what? Affect us ultimately. How much? Probably not as much as the, the individual family. Like if I say $100,000, that effect of $100,000 on my family might be a $2 reduction. So even, even when we are working toward the, uh, satisfying, optimizing the enterprise, still we might lose. So in, in fact, that contradiction is the one that makes it very difficult to deal with. Never mind the scope of enterprise we have a problem with. My enterprise might be my organization, my enterprise, my enterprise might be my function, my enterprise might be the process I'm involved, my product enterprise might be an army, my enterprise might be DOD, my enterprise might be national security, my enterprise might be a US, and you can see how it goes. Okay. Enterprise is perspective. What is a perspective? It's a mindset. It's a window. It's a way of looking at things. Okay. So if it's a mindset, it's just like a belief system, right? I have to believe in enterprise or not believe, or how much of it. So, if it's a belief system, it needs, med it needs a thinking tool. We need to have a tool to think about it. There are many good suggestions in literature, and uh, many of you have been exposed to many of it so far or not. But one tool that often used for describing the effect is people, process, technology. And I will expand it that not necessarily is a complete, but it's a one view. It's a one window. You look at it and says, if I do something that helps me, how does it help other people? How does it affect other people or influence other people? How does it affect other processes? How does it affect other technology that I'm dealing with? Not necessarily always positive. Sometimes, I will later on use the example of Chifa. Sometimes, in order to do in a technology for a, you know, the data analytic, we might put a tool, and this tool might cause problem in GRB, another program. So effect and interdependency of multivariable is the one that the subject of enterprise. Multivariable could be organization, could be function, could be system, could be process, and the multi-domain as well. So that, that one way is looking at that this way. <coughs> Most of us are kind of raised to look at the organization that way. We all have a boss, our boss has a boss, and then to some, after that we don't see what happened. Kind of get, uh, get disconnected to the rest of the world. But we, we think that we function like that. But in reality, we are functioning like that because of interdependency. So if you are here doing some work, let's say, uh, 
that, that's a take law enforcement and, and military has to interface with a lot of other uh, organs. Education, let's say urban management staff college. Urban management staff college has to deal with all organizations that provide us to come here. By the way, I'm a proud alumni of urban management staff college. One of the early, early uh, uh, inception of urban management staff college, which was 14 weeks course, <laughs> combining all three of them in one course, I graduated. And I took it at the early part of my career and has helped me drastically, as I'm sure it's helping you drastically for uh, So we are functioning like that. This education was provided to me, and I was sitting in somebody in finance that affected me. So effect of action that we do on other organizations, on other people, is the key. At my universe, I'm a coster. I thanks Lyle for it. Excellent introduction. I wish I, I hope I deserve it, but my world is like that. <laughs> I have I have to find out the cost of readiness, cost of PCT, cost of logistics, cost of this. And uh, uh, every member of our senior people, they think when they have that number, that number means something, and sometimes they memorize it and repeat it in the elevator to for each other. Cost of soldier is one million dollars. <laughs> cost of this is that. I submit to you, we don't know what the cost of things, what, how much it is, after all these things. It depends the question that you're asking. If you're asking me the budget question, so how much money I want to put into uh, IT, I have an answer for you. If you say how many other organization costs might go up, I identify the organization that might affect it by that and uh, bring it up. So what, is, what that means, I brought one of them up like a recruiting. Cost of recruiting. Good. Cost of recruiting is the one that we have spent for advertisement and uh, all those things to get the young uh, uh, soldiers to come to the recruiting station. And then after that, there is a uh, training. After that, there is a housing. There is this, this. Up to the point that gets graduated. Is that the cost of recruiting? No. There is a tons of other things is cost of recruiting. Now, imagine that was few. We know the cost of recruiting. When I cost cost of VCT, do you think recruiting has anything to do with it? Yes, if I didn't have a recruiting, if I didn't have a soldier, this VCT was, um, didn't have those people, and if it's low, the cost goes low, if it goes, goes high. And then acquisition, uh, healthcare, and all of them, as you see, there is such an interdependency at this and on this, that you have a hard time to go say, what is that particular answer? So, question is always depend on the implementation. The, you know, the answer is always depend on the question and implementation of that, that question. So, my enterprise is not as big as we thought it is. My enterprise is kind of uh, uh, this soccer ball. And the reason is soccer ball because uh, I didn't uh, grow up with the American you know, football. Uh, soccer for the short people is a perfect sport. You, are <laughs> to run, uh, you, don't, you don't miss the ball. <laughs> In fact, you can run, a, run around this. Our organization of defense is a structure through uh, interdependency and uh, integration of a series of activities, as you see here. You're all familiar with this. Channel. It is way above my perspective. But it is someone's perspective that did that. At this force integration group that they were thinking G357 things that way. Uh, those people who set the requirement think that way. That was my universe, that was my enterprise. This is their enterprise. So you, you can see enterprise is from where you are seeing and looking out. Now, let's, let's go. This is the recent enterprise that I have been uh, kind of engaged. There is a, some of you might know, uh, Dr. Markowitz of Deputy G8 has become uh, Chief Data Analytic for the Army. What is this Chief Data Analytic for the Army? The idea is due to enterprise environment, there is a series of processes. We have, by the way, I shouldn't call it processes. One, we have a functional, 
which we call it line of business or line of effort and uh, things like that. Uh, and the OSTs call it flow, like a financial flow, logistic uh, supply chain flow, and those type of things. We do have, uh, uh, what, what are those? They are like a, a human resource management, acquisition and procurement, logistic and supply chain, financial management flow, uh, real property, healthcare, and on and on. These are different than 50 end-to-end -end processes that Army has, like a procure to pay, acquire to retire, and uh, so on. But we have system, each of those, when we're designing an enterprise, we develop ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning System, to capture those uh, functions. But we forgot to make an enterprise. We forgot to, like a GFEP. What is GFEP? ERP for financial management. Financial management, we said, is only one LOB. So is it enterprise? Yes, it is for financial management. But does it interface with the logistic? Yes. Does it interface with acquisition? Yes. Shouldn't it be a part of the same system? They are not. Because when we were designing it, our enterprise view was not wide enough. I was sitting in FM. They said, what tool do you need? I said, I need some tool, a tool to make my uh, financial management uh, uh, process perfect. So I developed, we developed a tool for us. When I say, I hope you don't blame any of those to be. Uh, but uh, we, we have all others. So these <coughs> enterprise view of army, in fact, there's an effort by OBT that trying to combine and bring all those systems into one uh, to uh, ASAP, bringing the data together and ultimately connecting them. So that's one lesson learned. We're going to enterprise. Our enter enterprise was not wide enough. Now we are paying a price. We are trying to invite them. And then these systems, they generate data, like a crazy data. It, the, these ERPs, GFAP, LMP, ASAP, uh, mm, GR, if A is not fielded yet, but they are generating a lot of data. The term big data slowly becomes reality for the army. We have so much data that our computing power and our uh, ability to process those data has become a bottleneck. So we are using tools like a Hadoop, uh, Click, and others. We run it for a long time on our um, uh, enterprise data to um, uh, summarize some uh, correlation and suggestion that later on for our analysis. But I'm a believer of we shouldn't only rely on data from authoritative source. In addition to five, six ERP system that we have here, there is 1,053 system supporting business side of the army. I have the list of them later on if anybody wants, I, I can uh, submit it. There is a lot of system, like arms collect the readiness, the other one collects that, the other one collects that. <coughs> Connection of those is again the issue of enterprise. We also have a lot of unstructured data. I do something, all my logic in Excel, they want to throw it out because it is uh, not part of the enterprise system. No, those are very useful uh, information. <coughs> Our analytical tool these days, this analytical tool, allow us to combine and mix and match and uh, correlate enterprise data with uh, 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 non-enterprise data, unstructured data, to, to prepare dashboard, report, and things like that. Priorities, constantly shifting. There was, there used to be standardization, standard reporting, the top priority. Look at where it is now. It, 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 you know, some of those, they really find out that this standard that we are talking about, it's a view and question at a particular time for a particular purpose. You cannot make it standard for everything all the time. You cannot use my cost of a BCT all the time for cost of BCT. One is talking about budget, one is talking about something else. And then there are risks. 
balance in this kind of uncertainty in the world, which is not my job, it's job, job of the leaders that they are uh, uh, look at the uh, national security and design operation around it and uh, so on. There is a continuously evolving and changing. So imagine those things, if they were standing still, I could take a picture. But we are taking a picture of people who are dancing. They don't stand still to take their picture. So our analysis has to be like a video now. It has to be a movement of those objects to, to see. Our brain doesn't let us to see more than three-dimensional. Yeah, if you are smart, uh, you can say, I can see this three-dimensional move in the space becomes four-dimensional. Our problem is so multi-dimensional, even in our data, we are having, uh, at least I have identified 19 to 20 view of data exist. If you have uh, 20 view of data, we are talking about uh, something like 200 different tables, report, and things you can uh, prepare from it. You are reporting this report, and the system, uh, the environment constantly changing and so on. Now, the performance focus. Performance focus from DIPRA and the DIPRA Modernization Act, then we are required to collect performance, the design performance metric, and co uh, collect those data and perform uh, and look at our performance and link it to our uh, uh, original plan. Like uh, I was planning to do something, am I doing it or not? This performance has become harder and harder because we are connecting subset, small organization, to a big things, which is readiness. Chief says, if your uh, work is not related to readiness, modernization, and reform, you have to ask yourself, or you cannot link it to that, you have to ask yourself, why am I doing it? Because this is leadership's uh, objective. So my, what is this performance? He says, I want to know what you do, how does it affect readiness? Now, you think that's easy? In a small world, but like a microeconomy of more than the example I said, it's very easy. I can define it. But if they say, my daughter not buying a car, how does it affect the United States economy? There is a big, big gap. And we are dealing with that. Army leadership dashboard that chief is trying to uh, kind of design from all these data that exist, the purpose of it is that. That go uh, dive down to every little organization, every little function, and says that's the way it relates to the readiness. That's the way it relates to uh, uh, my company. So this is kind of describing our environment. Now, there is a lot of emphasis on a data structure, which I am kind of involved with. The, anytime they need a data, data structure, particularly if dollar is involved with it, they are asking the ASAFM to develop, develop WBS structure, put it in one of the uh, uh, ERPs, and then people report it that way, and then we have those data and feed it up, and uh, chief and others see in their dashboard how, how it's related. But imagine this pushing this requirement down what we are doing. ASAFM want to know when we are spending, uh, let's say on a repair, what appropriation is, who's the, the owner of money, what peg it is, and things like that. Now I'm a mechanic doing the repair. Did the repair and says, okay, report it. You know, I can say I worked three hours and repair the Apache helicopter, uh, the number such and such. But no, I have to say what appropriation, what organization, what is. So we are pushing data collection and data requirement down to the group that they are not equipped to even understand why we are providing that and the quality of data is going down. So one of our you know, kind of optimizing enterprise that where should this data collection stop and where should, how far it can go. So we are doing a lot of things. If you're confused of some of the operation, you have reason to be. Because our focus was only a small unit that we had. Now our focus has changed to the enterprise. Uh, there is a lot of uh, shifting needed. 
By the way, later on I uh, discussed that enterprise thinking or enterprise perspective is not for everyone. They shouldn't actually think enterprise. By using example, uh, operational folks, uh, they don't need to be enterprise group. That's what I said, that mechanic doing that. Let's say I'm a, a doctor, doctor who does a surgery or um, doing operation, he doesn't need to be enterprise thinking. He has to focus on exactly what he's doing. If he's doing surgery on Mulan Gori over 65, he shouldn't think about the you know, population of the United States, how many 20 years old needs heart surgery, how many things, because I might die. So for that reason, we need some people to be focused locally, and that doesn't mean that the, the job is, you know, God forbid, not important, probably it's most important, because the doctor is the one who does the surgery. That is really, or the mechanic who repairs it, uh, aircraft or uh, logistic uh, supply, uh, the legal folks, the, I mean, of all of those things that you do is, is so essential and some of them are not necessarily enterprise level. But so, you will see the uh, dilemma. Now, th this data architecture, we're just doing it, we never have combined all of them together, you know, because we don't see, when I'm doing this uh, data architecture, the effect of it on a business uh, it's unknown. So, first they came says TBS, defense business system. They said develop WBS for uh, in a chief. Uh, we want to collect the data on a defense business system. We did it. Next time they came and said we want to do it on a contract. We want to know all the contract, how much they spend, where they spend, where they spend. We have a two hundred seventy thousand contract in the army, and those contracts are not as clean. But aren't those contracts are also, also ITs, defense business system? So defense business system has a contract too. So we develop another uh, WBS for the contract. So you, you see that overlap of it with the, if it's not consistent with the, the, D, in the DBS, defense business system, so the person is reporting it doesn't know report it under this structure, that is structure. So add another one, someone comes and says, I want to know the, let's say in a logistic, Tag number of every part that moves around. Develop a structure to report it. You do that. The first one was not that tough. Second one got a little harder. Third one became harder. Fourth one has become impossible. Because imagine this list is growing bigger and bigger and bigger. No person can comprehend the nature of this data that we are supposed to report. So the collective. Uh, so I'm, I'm just addressing the complexity. I'm not that I have a solution where is the enterprise and what to do with it. But anyway, another thing. <coughs> Our decision making has been structured as an under enterprise. What, what, are that, what that means? Means data source come from this uh, um, uh, core process. By the way, some of you know SciPunk, right? Some of you have learned uh, being Six Sigma supplier input process output. Input process output is a model that uh, most engineers use for either design, understanding, and so on. You put S at the beginning of it, C at the end, which becomes cyborg. We have turned the cyborg upside down. We have called it. Can you read? Can, can, can anyone make a rope? Copus. A copus. So, uh, what, why it is that? Because, uh, oh, what, I didn't mean to. Uh, mm, uh, who's our customer? Our customer, Congress, Army, OSD, uh, those are the customers. When they want to make decision, they need some uh, dashboard report, something to make decision on. To me, is output. To him or to them is input. So you can see even input, input output. In. Our processes, our process, we talk about you know, 15 end to end process and so on. We have performance data, input and performance data, and we have a result. We are supposed to correlate those. We are not able to do it. Recent tools, we run them for a while, they come up with some suggestion, then we talk to expert like you, does it make sense or not? In, in my mentoring uh, session, I mentioned to some of you that we really need you in a data uh, analytic, even though you have nothing to do with data analytic. You, the uh, functional expertise is needed to make sense out of the data analytics that we are, uh, we are using. 
So the, your role in uh, that correlation is uh, quite important. Because when you run the systems, sometimes those correlation, uh, they are by accident they are correlated, or they do have another, they are both correlated to another variable which is missing from this equation, and we think those are uh, uh, directly correlated. And then the system. Uh, so, so this is the decision model. Now, the way that OSD went says, okay, since we want to do that, let's structure all the data. My GFMDI uh, was an OSD initiative for creating a structure that all activities of DOD can be identified what it means. But they did have a system focus. They had a, I mean, weapon system focus. The designers were weapon system focused. They created a structure for the army that is not all about weapon system. It is about weapon system, but it's not all about weapon system. So uh, we have this structure. I say high cost of data standardization at the source layer. Got to the point that we cannot standardize anymore. They stand. What we are suggesting? Yes, use technology. You know, extract, translate, load using unstructured data, create a data, use BI and others to create that. Let's standardize our what we need rather than just the input that is coming to it. So we got all of this stuck here, so we are trying to convince leadership that don't tell us how to collect data. Tell us what you need, because there are too many people that need to be involved to design uh, what the standards should be, rather than someone from top designing it. And uh, that, that is going to the, the, again, the standardization. There is a balance in everything that is good, is good to the certain point, and it's not having a diminishing return. In fact, some of you, when you look at the distribution, if you put it in a cumulative sense, it becomes like an S-curve. They would call it knee of the curve, or uh, sweet spot, or whatever. At some point, there is a diminishing return. Finding that balance is the key. As I said, the enterprise is about optimization. Optimization is coming up with a solution that is balanced. Since it's multivariable, uh, the optimization is not easy to have to do. We have a max point, mean point. You have a, the, the kind of peak and valley all over. In fact, in optimization, we say, oh, this is not the answer uh, that the system gives. Say, why? It says, oh, we got this stuck in the uh, local optimization. We call it zigzagging. It goes back and forth, stay in one area, keep in zigzagging. It was a uh, wrong answer. So, yeah, in, uh, the academician versus the Wild West uh, approach, creating balance with both, between those, uh, again, is hard. What I'm talking about is mostly the universe of data and cost and decision making, but it's applicable as model of thinking for everything that you do. So it is not necessarily that uh, in your field, but it's not uh, far from it. This chart that uh, enterprise leaders are born or made, I have like a similar chart uh, describing this, but after I talked to you, I found that you all are way ahead of me on this, so I'm gonna skip all the chart relating to describing this. But really, uh, there are some shift of uh, uh, concept has to go through our mind. I just started with the standardization, which is so easy. I, I kind of question that the standardization is good to some degree. Where does it, where do we reach the point that the standardization is not good? Another point, centralization. Centralization is great. Saving overhead and all these things to a certain point. At, after a certain point, it caused problem, it caused more. Consistency, that I heard yesterday, everybody wanted consistency, equality. Those are, those characteristics is easy. If you were all doing the same thing, they were with the same resources, with the same focus, it was perfect. But each of us are doing different things to make that enterprise work. Some of those assumptions that is in our mind, it's said so clearly, we have to think about it again. Enterprise thinking or enterprise perspective forces us to revise some of the belief system that we have uh, coined in our brain already. 
that good or bad. This is good, that standardization is good, non-standardization is bad. Now I call it flexibility is good. I'm not sure about the standards, so I call it, we have to make it flexibility. Centralization, decentralization. So any of those concepts when you're talking about yourself, when you start talking about effective it on others, effective it on an organization that you're working, effective in the army, you answer my change. And that change requires mental flexibility. Just like it, uh, our young soldiers, which are flexible, yesterday in a temperature of 10 degrees, uh, without the uh, you know, kind of a proper clothes they were walking, and I cannot do it because they are flexible. Mind is the same thing. When you exercise it, you are able to do things that others cannot do. Like I, I was looking at uh, the cases, I really like, envy that the, uh, how people with the practice and exercise, they make their body so flexible that they can, I cannot even imagine that can be done. Your brain is the same thing. If you work with it, if you challenge every assumption that so far you have made, is it still valid in this case? If, if this project that I'm working, this assumption is still valid or not? So, this part of are we uh, uh, leader are born or made? The main part of it, there is some shift is required. This is talking about that mental shift, moving from where we are to one is as being a specialist or journalist. I was so proud member of a specialist. Like a, as engineers, I was looking at the world. Anybody who was not technical, I thought they are not. You know, what are they doing? You know, they, they don't know. They don't know how to solve differential equations. So, <laughs> how they survive? Uh, because our universe is so small that uh, I thought everything is, has to be solved with the mathematics and. Uh, mm, so we, we have to start being journalists, have a respect for the field that you don't have. I really thank uh, some of you that you had uh, half an hour of your valuable time spent with me and you really made me enterprise. I didn't know about a lot of what you do. When I was asking what you're listening, I was just like an elementary kid sitting listening that, wow, it ha this happens at Pecom, this happens at Rock Island, this is the way that you can this. Your being here is an enterprise initiative. When you work in your uh, <coughs> seminars uh, with the people that they are doing completely different things, do you think you feel strange at the beginning? You have to re-identify yourself. How do I fit in this? You know, these are engineers, this is doctor, this is this, this is that. How, uh, that is the case. You have to be able to break the mold, talk to the people, schedule a meeting, in, uh, interface even with the area that you might think has nothing to do with you. As you go through that, you find, you're going to find out there is a lot that has to do with you. Just like I found out, uh, as many of you know in our uh, discussion, I said, that, oh, I didn't know this type of information exists. I'm going to call you and I'm going to uh, send someone to uh, uh, talk to you and exchange the information because I, mean, I didn't know I need that. How did it happen? This in, in, uh, interaction and so on. From analyst to interpreter, from tactician to strategist, and all those things. But uh, really, you have to um, um, look at yourself as a uh, cast member versus lead role. Every one of us are, when we are becoming enterprise, when we are, when we are trying to uh, open ourselves to enterprise, we have to lead something. Lead initiative, lead discussion, lead integration, lead connection, KK initiative. Some of you to, might say, my supervisor does not give me enough to do. Believe it or not, under umbrella of enterprise that the leadership is focusing, you can create a lot of enterprise initiative. I don't buy anymore someone says, uh, I'm sitting asking for uh, someone to tell me what to do. You are the one who needs to make this connect, connect, connection and without each one of us getting involved, uh, we are not going to get there. And uh, problem solving. I, I, that's another thing. I'm a problem solver. In my resume always, uh, strong problem solvers or whatever. <coughs> we don't have enough people to identify problems. We need agenda setter. When someone says, I don't have anything to do, means I don't have agenda. So set the agenda. We are all in it. 
That is, don't expect someone upstairs who uh, knows everything and knows exactly what I do and watching me and you know, telling me what to do and I'm just waiting for him to tell me what to do. That doesn't work. It's not any more hierarchical organization. It's an integrated, connected, uh, interdependent organization that we are dealing with. So several of these, uh, one after each other, what happened? Is it me? <laughs> oh, okay. There are several of those, no, they changed them. It was your fault. <laughs> no, I, I guess uh, taking a blame is not a good thing. <laughs> no fear, no guilt, no, no expectation. Uh, so, uh, some of these are kind of talking for each of those how to uh, get to the uh, next one from tactician to... Uh, you have the chart, look, look at it, and I'm not... Uh, because I found that most of you are really good in this, and most of the course content was related to uh, some of these uh, topics, so I just want to skip that, uh, make it really. Uh, in order to grow uh, enterprise leader, we start with learning. And the learning today, if many of you are already in enterprise, based on my uh, understanding of a few days that I have been, many of you are excellent enterprise thinker. As I said, not all of us have to be enterprise thinkers, but if you want to be enterprise thinker, uh, learning is a first step. Educating yourself, taking a diverse courses that might be outside your particular field and so on. Then you learn the, by the strategy a lot the, the, in, the, in this course. If we know the mission, we have to work on the strategy in a uh, strategy doesn't have to be all at the top level for a little universe that I have. Still, I need a strategy. The strategy is how to best get the uh, implement uh, my activities to uh, in support of the mission. So that, and then uh, again, performance and uh, forecasting. I'm kind of jumping up and down here. Uh, we have a still the way to go. These are also some of the characteristics, and I, again, I saw in class uh, that you are addressing some of these uh, broader sense of uh, context, uh, sharpened sense of uh, perspective. It's a self-actualization. We need to know who we are, be comfortable with who we are, try to be comfortable with what we don't know, Try to link to the things that we don't know and uh, accept participation of others into it. So it is a, uh, it, these are kind of a people who have gone through this. Uh, there is a borrow chart. By the way, a few, few, few of my children have uh, um, uh, borrowed from uh, Army Management and Staff College without uh, uh, putting their name. I feel bad, really. I didn't know it's theirs. I put my name here and then I come on and it's theirs. So kind of uh, felt like I'm cheating. But it's all right. In, in, a, in a government, we are going, my work you can use, your work I use. <laughs> so it's, a, uh, it's always more, more preferred. This one I saw in your class, uh, in some of your seminar, it was uh, on a wall. This is really my chart. And I want to spend probably two, three minutes on that, and I think. Uh, the question is, when we say enterprise is a perspective, how many other perspectives exist? What was my perspective before I become enterprise perspective? Having an enterprise perspective. We have several perspectives so far from our organization and army, I'm not talking about everything else. We were system thinkers or having a system perspective. With the system, there is a degree of accuracy and degree of control exists that uh, you do have a control element. When we have an if-then statement in a system, we don't leave any room for some numbers to fall in between those uh, numbers. It gives you actually error. It doesn't let you go forward. So it's an element of control is very high. As you get the process, process processes include <coughs> systems and people and since there are multi-systems would be in the one process, you lose a little bit of uh, 
uh, element of control, but still the, there is a lot of control in the process. As you go up, function, <coughs> you have an element of control, you lose a level of it, you go organization, when you get enterprise, you have no control. You can have in influence, you can affect it. You cannot control it. We, have, we are a lot of system thinkers, they put us on the top level and we want to control everything. Control is the most natural human being response. You know, if I don't have control of my schedule, if I don't have control of my finance, if I don't have control, so we are raised to control. So if they put you in the top of one organization, the first thing you want to do, you want to control system, process, people, activity. Even you control time of people, you know, they, they go, uh, come and go to the thing, oh, you came one hour late. You know, like you know, said, uh, it's an element of control. So as you become more enterprise, you lose control. And be comfortable with that. It is all right to be a supervisor, a leader, and empower your people, and they do something wrong. Because, you know, just that different perspective might be you know, as a result of optimizing something else, so being it you know, someone. So we have to allow all of us participate. And at least I was a little guilty of, at the early part of my supervisor, I was controlling every word of uh, things in a chart. No, this doesn't make sense, you know. Assistant civility is going to see that, this act, you know, okay. And I was putting so much pressure on myself and my staff that the result was not even as productive. As soon as I start trusting and uh, engaging and empowering my team, my job got easier and they got happier. They do more work, I do less. So it's just perfect, 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 perfect suggest situation. And please do it when you see it works, honestly. Now, who needs enterprise uh, perspective? Higher you go, we need more enterprise perspective. Higher, I don't mean that these higher people are smaller, richer, and all these things. As I said, the doctors is here, which is probably the uh, highest paid uh, military, I mean, in a military system, the uh, uh, high, highest paid group. If it's you're dealing with a precise operation that has a, a, a well detailed, you have to, uh, and like a stand, uh, well, I was talking about the standardization, uh, and also the, uh, uh, Issue of operation, it's a well controlled, uh, well standardized, uh, you know, the same mechanic uh, uh, that it's turning a range. I said, if it turns a, uh, a standard says turn the range five times, it says, yeah, I'm enterprise. If I turn it four times, in one turn, which uh, takes two seconds, multiple hours by 6,000 that I do every day, so it's going to save me one hour, so that's enterprise thinking. No, don't enterprise thinking, just do it five times, forget about the effect of it. This is not you that you need to order as a doctor example. But as you go you know, from the vision, mission, strategy, operation, implementation, and like that, higher you go, the enterprise need, you know, view is required. As soon as you, you have an interface with another organization, you really have to have an uh, enterprise perspective. And I think I have a one or two chart, then I open it to the uh, discussion. Let's see, yeah, I have one more, okay. This chart also uh, is, is uh, your chart. So how, how many of you have seen it? How many of you? They better all be nodding their hands, sir. No, they're only, see, they're only six. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you see this chart? Why I could see it from distance, you couldn't see it. I was, I was just going through the material, and I found this chart. It really makes sense. Is it two things? One is that, the, you know, kind of actually, mm, mm, the, 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 from the development perspective, one from the competence perspective, the characters and uh, intellect and so on. So this is, this is a, something that you want to take it and put it in your pocket and once in a while look at it. See which one you are, are you working on your, uh, which aspect of uh, uh, in, in improving uh, thing. So this thing, this is my, my, my it, I was going to talk about it when, when I find out uh, I'm, uh, they found uh, uh, this mm, chart is there, so I said I better stay quiet. But this is a really good chart. Are you doing something there? <laughs> no, honestly, it does. Oh, okay. And now, this is a uh, this is really from, uh, from the uh, um, development perspective. Where um, how does it? Uh, 
when you are getting to the point, you know, the chart that had a vision and things like that, when you are dealing with the, the uh, institution, you have to have external awareness. You have to have a, the, um, uh, the political savvy. You have to be able to see bigger than uh, 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 just particular function. But start from being a team leader and you know, leading people and leading organization and so on. So I conclude my presentation here, and then the rest, the best part of it is your question and answer that I'm uh, waiting for. And Sarah, I don't know what the uh, process goes. I just wait, stop here, and then they ask questions or have a. Uh, Danny, 